Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, really happy to see you all here today. Um, today, we're going to go through the GFI Research Grant Program Overview. Um, but before we dive into the details, um, I want to highlight that for the Zoom webinar function, if you have any questions, um, please make sure to put your question in the Q&A box. Um, you can find this box in the bottom um, next to the chat box. Um, if you have a question, leave it there because so we don't want to lose your question through the string of text that we have on the chat box. So we want to keep that separate. Um, and with that said, I'm just going to go through um, the plan that we're going to talk today. Um, next slide, please. So the agenda for today will be as follow. We will go through a short introduction about GFI, uh, what our research research funding goals is and also we go through the detail of the rfp for 2022 um, and then we'll wrap up uh, the session with the q a for any question you have regarding this rfp next slide please so for those of you who might not be familiar with gfi uh, the good food institute is a non-profit organization that is dedicated to accelerate the shift to a sustainable healthy and just food system. We are funded 100% by philanthropy and have earned a guided star platinum seal for transparency. Um, our organization employs over 130 staff around the globe with three key programmatic departments. In science technology, our team of scientists work to advance an open source and foundational science of alternative proteins. Our corporate engagement team build relationships with the world's largest food manufacturers, meat companies, restaurants, and retailers to help them capitalize on opportunities in alternative proteins. We also help support the industry entrepreneurs and startups, as well as investor and financial institutions. Last but not least, our policy team advocates for fair regulation of plant-based and cultivated meat and lobbies for government investment in sustainable pro protein research and development. Next slide, please. So um, as for today, we want to highlight uh, the new GFI research grant program, um, the new RFP for the GFI re research grant program. But uh, just a little bit of a background, uh, we started this grant program in 2018 and since then, we have held the annual request for proposal to grow, create excitement for, and increase the visibility of the global scientific network of alternative protein researcher. Um, this GFI research can, is aimed to be open access research so that we can share um, the information gained from this research to address the organoleptic properties, cost, and scale up of alternative proteins. Next slide, please. So the reason we funded alternative protein research because we know that for us to success and make alternative proteins no longer alternatives, we need a continued research and technological development. Despite the, the increasing commercial interest, we still lack of open access R&D. So therefore we need more um, of the activities in this area. And we do that by actually identifying what is the most important white space in alternative proteins. Um, and we uh, funded those projects. Next slide, please. So since the first launch of the GFI grant four years ago, we have awarded $13 million to 82 research topics. And that goes across 17 countries around the world. Um, all of these are powered by donations from small number of our generous donors. Um, next slide, please. And for the APAC region, we are delighted to see more activities from our APAC researcher. We also hope that with this year, we will see more and more application coming in from the APAC researcher. And uh, we want this to, um, we have seen the increase in the activity in APAC since 2019, and the researchers have gained more and more funding from GFI in this region as well. Next slide, please. We hope that the GFI funding will act as a seed funding or as a stepping stone for alternative protein researcher. As Professor David Block have mentioned here that 
um, the grant has helped him to create a breakthrough and also the um, address the critical industry challenge regarding cultivated meat. And this is a great case example um, because he then go on to found the, um, uh, the Cultivated Meat Consortium, which was established with the US National Science Foundation um, to the UC Davis. And is this the first federal cultivated meat funding in the US? So this is a great success story for us. Next slide, please. So next I'm gonna walk through um, what is about the 2022 research grant program. Um, so this year we will only have one RFP and this RFP is approximately $3.9 million. Uh, and this will go across to two funding mechanisms. The first one being the field catalyst grants and the second one being the discovery grants. Both of these grants um, will go through a two phase application process where the phase one applications are due on June 3rd of 2022 and phase two application will be by invitation only. Next slide, please. So the field catalyst grant will provide up to $2,250,000 in funding for a targeted project um, lasting between 18 to 24 months. Within this field catalyst grants, you may request an additional $100,000 by partnering with research and or industry stakeholder who have not yet received GFI funding. Um, for any question regarding this, we can connect you to the right person um, in GFI so that we can evaluate whether your partnership is the appropriate one. Um, and for the Field Catalyst Grant for this year, we have three topics that we want to focus on. The first one is the biological process method for creating functional plant-based ingredient, um, which I will cover. And then the second one, the animal-free non-recombinant albumin and transferrins for cultivated meat. And the last one is the creation of flavor components for alternative seafood. Next slide, please. So for the first topic is the, in the field catalyst grant or the priority A, um, the biological processing method for creating functional plant-based ingredient. What we see is that in the current challenge, um, most of the protein ingredients or function functional ingredient used in plant-based meat are mainly coming from chemical and mechanical methods. And we know that those methods is actually impact on the structure and function of the final ingredients. Also, some of these process require quite an energy intensive step as well as um, undesirable chemicals. Therefore, we propose that we seek a proposal to develop and optimize biological processes method for the creation of highly functional ingredients for plant-based meat and seafood. The source of ingredient can be commodity or specialized crop or any domesticated plants. So we want to see in a successful proposal that you show us of how um, your method can improve functional sensory or nutritional characteristic of the ingredients. And also for which plant-based meat and product are you targeting your ingredients to be used in? As also, what is the processing methodology and can this be used for other type of ingredients? Um, so those are some of the criteria that we look for in this topic of the funding priority. You can, of course, reading for more detail in the uh, full RFP document. So with that, um, I want to transfer the stage to Dean. Thank you. Great, thanks, Mon. Um, and just super quickly, I'll uh, introduce myself for those that um, don't know me. Um, Dean Powell, I'm our side tech specialist focusing on cultivated meat. Uh, and together, we also share fermentation. So throughout this, if you do have uh, any specific questions you'd like to follow up on later, um, if it's more cultivated meat uh, related, um, send it to me or plant based to Mon and fermentation, um, maybe include us both. Um, but with that, I'll uh, continue on with the presentation. Um, so our second topic here, priority B, uh, animal-free non-recombinant albumin and transferrin for cultivated meat. Um, so I won't uh, go through all the, the challenge uh, information on the slide there, but basically, so previous analyses have found that um, recombinant proteins and growth factors 
uh, make up the vast majority of serum free cell culture media costs. Um, I'm sure anyone who's interested in this area knows that um, culture medium costs uh, have been a big focus topic. Um, and so over 95% of these costs are driven specifically by albumin and transferrin as two of um, uh, the highest volume, um, high cost ingredients. And so uh, that is why we're targeting this as one of the priorities uh, for our field catalyst funding. And so when we're looking at, uh, you know, non-recombinant animal free alternatives, uh, there are like one or two examples. So one example is an Israeli cultivated meat company called Future Meat. Um, so they identified a chickpea homologue um, of serum albumin. And so they have stated that they're using that to reduce their media costs by 60%. Um, so this suggests it could be a promising direction uh, for plant proteins to replace uh, some of these essential serum proteins. Um, similarly, from the academic side, uh, it's been shown that homologues of animal transferrin um, have been identified in photosynthetic organisms such as fungi and algae, um, but studies haven't yet been conducted to um, investigate um, the use of this source uh, of transferrin uh, in cell culture uh, for cultivated meat purposes. Um, so therefore, that's why we wish to support uh, more innovative uh, developments in this area, as we see it's potentially a very promising field of research. Um, and so we won't, as it says on the slide, be accepting proposals focused in recombinant protein production of albumin or transferrin. Um, and the reason for this is that the requirement for these ingredients at a scale where cultivated meat is replacing even a fraction of traditional meat production um, would require a very large and far larger volumes of these proteins than recombinant protein production could service. So this is already a, a commercial scale um, technology, um, but the you know, amounts of albumin and transferrin that would be required for cultivated meat exceed um, the capacity that we have um, by a large amount. And therefore, we view that this technology will be better directed to higher value, lower volume meeting uh, ingredients uh, such as some of the more expensive uh, growth factors. Um, and so with this topic, um, additionally, we also um, want any applications to focus on the fact that empirical testing of any candidate substance must be conducted in 100% serum-free culture conditions to be considered for the grants. Um, so we wouldn't consider applications where you're looking at a small fraction of ser uh, serum-containing media, um, as that really doesn't suit uh, the purpose the industry will need. Um, there's a few other considerations uh, if you look through the RFP document as well to help guide any applications. So we'll jump now to um, our last funding priority, uh, C, which is the creation of flavor components for alternative seafood. Uh, so seafood products have a wide range of distinct flavor profiles um, and alternative products need to mimic these while avoiding um, off flavors and overpowering fishy tastes that consumers can find um, quite a turn off um, and linked to um, off uh, fish products. So this funding priority um, can be addressed uh, under any of the alternative protein pillars we have. So whether plant-based, fermentation derived or cultivated seafood. So it's a bit more of an open uh, focus. Um, and part of the reason here is that we do see that uh, alternative seafood products are an underserved element of the alternative protein um, sector so far. Um, and flavor is no exception to that. So proposals under this topic um, could consider methods for producing these flavors, um, but they have to be, uh, at least theoretically, able to be easily scaled and capable of achieving relatively low cost. Um, so we will look for considerations of these two characteristics to be included in a proposal. Um, you can be conducting these experiments at lab scale, but you should include a theoretical framework for how they would be scaled up. Um, and it's also going to be important that you address storage and stability of proposed flavor ingredients. Again, uh, that might not necessarily be investigated uh, in any proposal you submit, but it should be considered in some of the background and um, related material that you include. And so importantly, we'll also consider proposals from investigators who plan to protect um, IP related to their specific ingredient of choice. Uh, for example, you know, regarding the production process that you might be utilizing. Um, but data on the relationship between specific molecules and then the related sensory experience um, they evoke should be made open source. Um, I'll touch on IP more generally later as well, uh, but this is a specific tweak to our IP considerations um, to make sure that any proposals in this space uh, fit with you know, the priorities for research or 
private institutions that might want to apply for funding on this. And so with that, we'll move on to our second um, grant mechanism. Uh, so previously we had three, uh, we now only have two. That's important to note for those of you that might have applied for our funding um, previously. So we no longer have the uh, smallest grant, which previously you could apply for at any time in the year. Uh, we only have these two grants, they're only open for this period right now. Um, so for the discovery grants, um, these are up to $100,000, as uh, Wasman mentioned. Um, and this is funding for targeted projects lasting approximately 12 months. So a smaller focus than the other grant. Um, but importantly, um, proposals here are encouraged but not required to focus on one of the research concepts uh, which we've identified in our Advancing Solutions for Extended Proteins initiative. Um, so this ASAP uh, initiative uh, has led to, we have a hyperlink here on the slide, and we'll share the slide after so you can um, follow through that to get it yourself. But basically we've set up a database where you can access um, some of the different research priorities and ideas uh, that we feel uh, need to be addressed and will present or are currently bottlenecks uh, to advancement of whether plant-based fermentation derived or cultivated meat sectors. Um, and so in this database, you can break it down by a production platform. So if you're only interested in plant-based uh, research topics, you can do that. Uh, similarly for fermentation or cultivated meat, you can also break it up by whether we've deemed it a academic research topic or more of a co commercial solution uh, type idea. So you can, uh, if you are looking at potential ideas on how could I apply for funding, you can use that as a way to try and generate some ideas and um, think about what uh, your expertise and is and how it could align with some of our funding priorities. But again, I'll just stress here that if you feel that you do have an innovative idea or research topic that is of high value, and should be worthy of our funding. Um, don't be dissuaded if the topics in our ASAP database don't include your specific idea. Of course, we recognize that we haven't thought of everything and there's nowhere we could 100% um, know what is most valuable to fund. Um, so we'll be very open to being persuaded by uh, the innovative ideas that you may have. So uh, now kind of more of the nuts and bolts uh, type uh, slides coming up here. Basically, if you want to apply, um, please go through to that link uh, on the screen. Um, you have to create a, a user profile uh, and then you can go to our application portal. And again, the date to submit that phase one application is June 3. Um, we do have a template that you can use to submit that phase one application with specific questions you have to answer. So please just use that template um, to speed that up for yourself. Um, and if you have any questions about the application process and just actually the functional aspects of it, please shoot that straight through to our research grants team at that email. Um, where while someone and I come in is more on the potential topic ideas um, and some other uh, bits that I'll, I'll mention at the end. Then we just have the timeline on the screen here. Um, so this is what we're aiming for. We have that phase one application. So uh, that's what we're in right now. So we'll have to have that phase one submission by June 3. Uh, we'll then have the review process. Uh, so this will likely be uh, every application will be reviewed by uh, two to three scientific experts. That will both be uh, those within GFI, but we also have some external reviewers that assist us there. Um, you'll be notified uh, around June 27 there. And those that we deem uh, worthy of moving through to phase two, we then have a separate application uh, template that will ask you to provide a bit more detail on certain topics. You might get some feedback from our phase one reviewers asking you to expand on bits, maybe um, focus on different areas a bit more heavily or, or provide some more information here and there. And then that will be due by August 1. And we'll then have another review period whereby around September 1, uh, we'll announce the winners and we'll then have a contracting window to make sure that uh, any organizations, whether it's private companies or research institutions, et cetera, um, can get a uh, contract framework that's acceptable to both sides. Um, so we offer a bit of a window to make sure that we can get that done. But then of course, uh, if there are issues, uh, we will have to work through them by December 31, as that's the window that will close off uh, access to the funding. If we haven't found a solution by then, unfortunately the offer will expire. So generally when we're doing the uh, evaluation of applications, uh, we have these five elements on the screen. Uh, which will be our major drivers for 
uh, picking the highest uh, or most competitive applicants. So obviously scientific alignment. So this is the aims of um, our GFI grant program in general, which uh, Wasmont touched on and uh, are expanded on a bit more in the RFP document itself. Obviously impact is very important for us. So uh, if something is an interesting idea, um, we really need you to link that to the economic or commercial outcomes whether that's directly as a result of your research or what could flow through from that through future research projects. But we do need you to link it to commercial outcomes. Um, contribution to the scientific uh, community is more related to how you may disseminate your outcomes, whether that's through publications, uh, presentations, IP generation, uh, things like that. Um, and then the basics around project planning and again, commercial relevance, which is linked to the expected impact. Um, and again, yeah, just a note there about the field catalyst applications where we have some more specific guidance in the RFP about um, our proposal topics and what we require. Super quickly, what we don't fund, um, insect farming, uh, GFI doesn't support or uh, focus on insect farming at all. Um, and also then we, for this program itself, we're not focusing on a human subject research. Uh, potentially, there could be elements where you can include human subject research, but it must be a sub element of a larger project. We won't fund something that's just specifically um, human subject research alone. Um, similarly, market research isn't what we're looking for here, nor consumer preference studies or life cycle analyses. We understand these are important, but they're not the focus of our uh, more basic research and um, actual technologically focused uh, funding program. And then who's eligible? Uh, we've kept this quite open, so you can be from any sector. And we have funded projects uh, from most of these sectors, definitely academia and industry. I'm not sure if we've got nonprofit and government uh, fundees, uh, but it is open to them. In any country around the world, we funded projects uh, from many countries, every region of the world, so that is not a barrier at all. Um, if there are language difficulties, if English isn't your first language, we understand that, and you won't be marked down for um, potential language issues. Um, so please do as best you can and we, we will understand that and um, work with you. Um, and just importantly, uh, what someone did share before, but uh, we have had um, startup commercial only entities apply and we're now funding. So I will jump to our IP considerations, but just to show that we have found that we can make equitable arrangements that uh, commercial companies uh, deem acceptable to their priorities. Uh, so don't feel like this is only going to fit with uh, the more academic research minded institutions and their priorities. But with that said, the goal of our program is to support research that will benefit as many industry stakeholders as possible. So ownership of IP generated uh, will be jointly owned by GFI and the grantee um, and research results must be published um, in open access peer reviewed journal or a publicly available website, whether that be ours or or others. If you are focusing on generating IP, um, you will be expected to license IP on a royalty free basis to academic institutions for research use and at a reasonable royalty rate on a non exclusive basis to any business that wants to commercialize the resulting IP. Um, and grantees should use their best efforts to grant only non exclusive licenses uh, where royalties are shared equally between us and the grantee. Um, and so we do encourage information sharing, but we do not prohibit the generation of IP or its uh, protection, as we understand that uh, it is a practical uh, reality of work in the sector. And so with that being said, I'll open it up to any questions you may have, whether you want to type that in the Q&A box, uh, or no, please do type it in the Q&A box. Um, but just while you're thinking about questions, um, we have our contact uh, details on the screen here. So like I mentioned before, um, if you're more interested in some of the content specific questions, so more around um, kind of the type of technical details we're interested in, um, please contact Wasamon and I, again, uh, cultivated meat towards me, plant-based towards uh, Wasamon and fermentation include us both. Um, if it's more to do with the general nuts and bolts of the grant and application and creating your account, et cetera, um, please direct that towards uh, Kyle Saucy, who's the uh, manager of our grant program. Uh, he's based out of the US. And we have a 
ge uh, generic uh, research grant program team email as well to include there. Um, something else I'll just add is if you are looking for collaborators or potentially equipment or ingredient partners, um, we do have a very strong international network across all of those different areas. So if you feel like, um, for example, on the cultivated meat side, you might not have access to cell lines or you might not have access to um, different elements of serum free media or maybe microcarriers, things like that, that would help you actually be successful in this project please reach out to us and we do know different academics and companies that are open to partnerships and might have different expertise that could help facilitate a strong replication from your side. Uh, for example, we really don't want to be funding projects where a grantee is looking to generate a cell line so that they can then conduct the actual useful research. There are cell lines existing, so we would ideally always want to link someone up with an existing cell line rather than duplicating that type of effort. Um, so with that, I, let's have a look at the Q and A box. I might stop sharing. So you can see our big faces. Um, I'll open up the Q and A. Do we have any there? One. Oh, you're on mute. Yes. Um, we just have one question regarding: Is the funding provided to existing industry players that are large, or only to startups? Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess we don't specify only certain types of players. So I think for, uh, we don't have this written as a specific policy, but I think for existing large scale industry players, you would have to justify, I guess, why our funding would enable this research to occur where it might otherwise not. Um, startups, that's obviously a lot easier to justify than an existing industry player, but I wouldn't say off the bat that it's, it wouldn't be considered. Um, okay. Answer that. What next? Are you interested in funding post harvest research? Um, I think for the for the targeted topic, this is not included for this targeted topic. And it really depends on what is a post harvest research are you interested in doing? If that's aligned to, you know, late, say maybe crops development, you can explore on the GFI website on our solution database. And you can probably uh, see whether your research is aligned to any of those topics and apply through a discovery uh, fund mechanism instead of the, the targeted topic ones. Yeah, definitely. Um, that post-harvest period is, um, you know, it's a critical element of production. So as long as you can justify why that uh, research is needed and is a bottleneck that isn't currently being addressed, um, I think it's definitely something we can consider. Yep. Um, so the next question is, at what stage does the startup needs to be to apply for funding? I guess, um, it needs to be at a stage where you can demonstrate that you have the relevant expertise uh, to conduct the research and that you have either currently the right equipment and facilities or you have the right partnerships to be able to access the right equipment and facilities. So obviously part of your funding request could be for some equipment and, and obviously consumables, but um, you know if another application already has access to some of that equipment, and facilities, and therefore they are going to have a wider uh, research focus as part of their proposal that might make them more uh, competitive. Um, but generally, if you can prove that you have the right capabilities and expertise uh, to give us confidence that you can conduct successfully the project that you're proposing, um, I think you can be at any stage. And I think that's where partnerships um, become a lot stronger. If you have appropriate partnerships that will improve your uh, competitiveness uh, for this program. Thank you, Dean. Um, the next question is, plant-based protein ingredient development is eligible for funding. So as I mentioned before, for this particular year, we want to focus on the development of biological method to develop the ingredients. So um, if your scope of research is um, on the chemical or mechanical side, we would not, we actually not focusing on that right now. 
But then again, you can go into our uh, solution database to, to see whether your research um, bring any novel um, information or any gaps that we might ha already have identified but did not highlight for the RFP this year. And you can apply through the dis discovery fund mechanism. Yeah, and I guess also the um, field catalyst uh, uh, topic C of the seafood specific ingredients can also include plant-based ingredient development. Uh, so that is another element you can look at. Yep. Um, so this next question, could you please provide a GFI point of contact to whom we could reach out for the details of partners for underlying plant-based raw materials and processing equipment? So say in the areas of peas, beans, et cetera. Um, so one thing I can say is uh, for APAC specifically, we do have uh, what we call an APAC uh, industry ecosystem database. And so we have that on our website and that's set up so that if you want to, um, for example, if you're looking at uh, raw materials for peas or beans, uh, you can go to our ingredient supplier uh, tab and that will have a list of suppliers and the type of proteins they're providing. We also then have an equipment supplier tab as well. Um, and then we also have a pilot scale and um, uh, pilot scale manufacturing uh, tab as well. So rather than buying equipment, if you wanted to utilize facilities uh, for rent or hire, we have um, a list of those as well. That's mainly for Singapore at the moment. Um, so if I'm not sure where you're based, sorry, it's, it's anonymous, but uh, if you do have a different region you're looking at, um, within APAC, please reach out to us. GFI US also has a global uh, directory, um, which I could, I see Mons shared our APAC ecosystem database, um, but we can also, oh, it's based in Singapore, great. Yeah, well, please use that database then. Um, and if you don't find the right partner there, um, you could then reach out to, uh, I think if it's plant-based, maybe reach out to Wasama. Yes. Um... You show to me and I can connect, uh, I can like ask you what you need and then I can connect you to the right person. Okay, I think, um, so is there any question regarding the content of the RFP um, or the question on the specific topics, please feel free to drop that in. Um, you can also, uh, if you come up with the question later on, you can also email uh, Dean or I, depends on which topic are you focusing on for this, uh, for this time. Yeah, definitely. Um, and if you are more interested in looking for collaborators, we do on our uh, US website have a collaborative uh, researcher directory uh, where researchers that are already active or interested in um, alternative proteins have listed uh, their research topic areas, some of their capabilities and what they're interested in in terms of partnerships. Um, so I'd suggest you could have a look at that as well. Um, it looks like maybe Mon is going to put that in the chat. Yes, <laughs> um, yes, thanks. And as I mentioned, we will be sharing uh, the slides that we just presented. Uh, so there's a few links in there that um, you can follow through as well for more details. Um, but if we don't have any more, thanks for that, Mon. That's the link to the collaborative research directory in the chat. Um, if we don't have any more questions, uh, yeah. we could probably we finish share. up now then. Yeah, and we'll just share also the solution database link so that um, they can review uh, in case for any discovery grant um, mechanism. And I think we can wrap up. Excellent. No, thank you everyone for your attendance and time. Um, really look forward, uh, look forward to seeing your applications and we will, you know, love to help anyone in the APAC region apply as we on said, we do want to see more applications and we can even have a look at drafts of your application um, before you send them in for um, review by our uh, panel. So you could also do that if you get them finished ahead of time and ask us to provide some comments or, or guidance as well. Uh, but otherwise, um, enjoy the rest of your day and, and thank you for your time. Thank you for calling. Thanks, everyone. See ya. Bye.